It's funny, I was just catching something that um, a strong woman has said recently and uh, it was about make sure you don't dim your light or play yourself out of the, the role that we're meant to adopt on this path or the blessings that are due our way and you know with this whole labels and names and I guess it might be a level of confidence that back in the day I didn't see myself as anyone powerful whereas now that's obviously flip reversed it and I'm finally happy to claim the title of healer you know um, as I said like I don't really want to be seen as someone that goes around healing people I think all it is is a deep um, capacity to hold space for somebody else while they tap into things and obviously obviously not obviously and I trust with what I create or how I hold space is that that's usually done without words initially it's obviously if people don't you know want a bit of fun and oracle cards and things but with ceremonies and sounds healing you know words don't get involved people can tap into their own expanding consciousness their own ancestral messages their own um demons and banish them their own light and harness that their own love and let it travel from the little toe all the way up to the big ear you know <laughs> i think confidence is what a lot of our sensitives um have struggled with over the years and um because self-doubt is the first sign or I can't remember where I read that self-doubt is the first sort of um, step to allowing the darkness to take over, take hold. So if that continues to happen on a regular basis, basis, whether that's every day or whatever with these negative looping thoughts, we um, dim any hope of or shatter any dreams of um, becoming bigger than we currently are at any one moment in time and so having like shied away from anything public speaking was it was a big uh, scary thing for me back in the day um, even when I was leading like little mindfulness conversations or vulnerability circles when I was trying to sort of support workplace wellness back in the corporate world but I mean that's slightly tokenistic at the minute it's great things are happening but I think the whole the whole system is just pitted against the person is against the healthy ways that one should be interacting interfacing with external energies on a daily weekly basis it's just not designed to support the expanse of consciousness in a positive way or self-love and self-worth and um, we tend to give our power away a lot in those dynamics. Now, this is not to criticise anybody that is in those situations because we all have to be there in some way. All of us interface, interact with the external world and have priorities and practical world um, responsibilities that we need to honour because, you know, this is just how it is at the moment in time. However, if we do trust that this is a big year of revelation and we're moving into greater times ahead, things will crash and burn. And when I say that, I don't want to be manifesting more mayhem. It's just what a lot of us seers have seen, dreams, prophetic visions, words that are coming through. Like I'm channeling right now, so I'm not really sure what's going to come out, but I know that there are darker times ahead. That doesn't mean that any of us that are doing the work and living in light and love, that it's going to affect us on a personal basis. This is why we have to differentiate between the external world and the internal world, because nothing really in the external should, I don't like that word, but we, 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 we can't allow it to have an effect on our internal um, nervous system. That is how they manipulate and control the, the populace the the the, the gen, you know the people and um rome caesar rome i don't know what that's coming up right now rome roma very profound place back in the day i didn't realize i knew that i was a seer or i'm more clairaudient and smells very kind of um <laughs> i've got a bigger nose than average person so it could be that but the Colosseum always 
I, I just went to places there every time I went in it because I used to live in Italy for a couple of years, did Erasmus and did a work placement out there for um, grassroots food movement. And um, when I was ever traveling to Rome, I would always visit the Colosseum and like it is, uh, and the film Gladiator, like, it, don't know, I don't know what it does to me. It's like, well, I do know, I'm just not sharing it now. It's just past life stuff. But, you know, any any buildings or any places that people are drawn to right now, you know, they're all messengers. Could be positive, or, well, I don't want to say positive or negative, could evoke traumatic responses and, and, and hard feelings, but that's how we deal with trauma because we confront it and we move past and we allow it to, we allow the, ourselves to feel the emotions and we move past that. Um, but that was a tangent away from, I don't know why Rome was coming up, but back to the main message of, um, just give me a minute to remember what it was. <laughs> God, this life is a, is a, this path is a funny old one. No, it's gone. Maybe it's just meant to be that. Have a laugh, people. We remember what's relevant. We forget what's... No, actually, I'm going to I'm gonna flip that round. I was going to say we forget what's not, but a lot of us have forgotten our power, so this is a time... Ah, oh, I'm coming back. This is the time where sensitives are reclaiming our power because it's a confidence thing. And so I know that whoever I interact with, and I do tend to get drawn to deep intuitive souls, often lone warriors, is that we find our light together, we find our power, we find our confidence, because we have incredible knowledge to share. Everybody does. A lot of us, though, sensitives have experienced things that we don't share, we have never shared, and that could be prophetic visions, gifts, poetry, things that need to be written down and shared with the world. That is part of our self-expression. That is part of our healing. That is part of love vibration. That is part of becoming or learning how we become authentic and not copying other people or wanting to do other people or prove that we're better than... No, we're in our own race, in our own lane, going at our own pace. And having known that from the day that I set up this little business of mine, wherever it moves to right now, because obviously I've had to dip in and out of this healing thing, is that this mission is for us and us alone to discover and share our gifts in the ways that we are guided by the most higher, by whoever we connect with in the higher realms. For me, we've all got different belief systems and I'm not here to judge anybody. I just believe and it's important for us to have faith, faith in ourselves faith in love, faith in higher power, faith in the daily, minute by minute changes and choices that we make to be better and do better. And if we can't be happy for other people, um, if if their light irritates our demons, then we've got to realise that we've got to do some healing. And it, it, it's, it's not going to be easy or painful or pretty. This year won't be for a lot of people because they've been putting it off for years. But if they don't want to be vulnerable to demonic uh, attacks or evil spirits, to um, karmic in imbalances, karmic debt, passing that on through the next generations, like people think this is all a game and I'm making it us. No, the more you harbour shit, you pass that on through the lineage. The more that you let go and you forgive and you allow people to become whoever they want to be without judgment or fear, that is how we create new generations, healthier generations, lighter generations. And I say lighter because I know that I've dropped weight and I've got things. It's not only because I've cut out white sugar as much as possible, you know, and done a relatively healthy diet, which is also I've been raised consciously in that way. You know, I give thanks to my parents for making um, exercise, sport, nutrition, something that we um something important you know uh but when we do the spiritual work face shapes change you drop muscle mass because muscle that we cut is energy and if we don't deal with the trauma from previous like i don't believe in the normalizing of, of obesity and fat at the moment you know it will spark potential controversy but i can only speak from a i won't judge anybody for it but i do know having been chunkier and bigger myself and having come to the place where i'm at now and the level of ancestral and generational healing that i've done as well as 
the physical realm you know they say 80 percent nutrition 20 percent exercise is a balance of like how we maintain good health um is we can drop weight if we and i had a conversation with with beautiful two soul sisters the other day when we shared when we broke bread together and um we contain a lot in our muscles in our muscle memory that is not related to um food that we eat in this realm yes it can be I'm not talking about i'm just talking about me yeah i can't really talk about everybody else some people are not eating very well and that is their and that is why they might be bigger than other people but um from my own observations i've never overeaten or excessively sometimes I might get the munchies but you know um but having done the spiritual work continuously over three years and done my little studies and various things and obviously written that Roots, Ross Cuts and Rain Sticks where I do touch upon things like this, you know, it's a whole analytical essay. I've just, I know I'm neurodivergent. I've got a different brain to other people and I'm awakening other parts of my consciousness from different realms and past lives. So um, I've, this has been a study for me. The reason why is because, you know, there's a lot of these coaches conscious coaches and you know who haven't lived life they've not been through anything that they can advise anybody else on and I don't really believe in anyone else giving people advice as I just said whoever we consider ourselves to be healers nutritionists PTs this that and the other if we are able to hold space for others it's because we can hold space for ourselves we can only lead people to uh, as far as we have been and not beyond that, because then it's dangerous, especially if within the ceremonial psychedelic space, people think that they can save the day and healers when actually they're doing a lot worse. And since I've been doing the video thing, the reason why I continue is because behind the scenes, people do reach out to me. People have said to me, thank you for sharing that video about the spell work and stuff. I've been going through that. I took ayahuasca in England, in the UK, and I've had psychosis. I've had, I've been through some horrific situations since I've done that. You know, there's lots of things that are going on behind the scenes that are not being talked about right now because everyone's just thinking of that. This is the year, one, two, two, one on the clock, direct mirror polarity. Everything done in the dark will come to light. So clearly, multiple tangents in this i'm sorry sometimes my brain does just go like this but i've studied myself and it's only at that level of self-awareness and self-observation is that we can start to hold space for other people you know everybody wants to be a life coach everybody wants to do this that and the other <sighs> good luck to everybody on their path it's not a judgment but i just see a lot of damage being done especially in the psychedelic space where people think that they can come and they've got a healer and a guru complex where they can come and save the day and actually over time it reveals they might be money driven ego focused and um, not truly nurturing the people that they're interacting because they haven't even activated their own heart chakra they haven't done their own personal healing or shadow work so um, we need to be mindful in all of this space. As long as we can harness our own power, our own spiritual gifts, our own confidence, nobody else can take advantage of us. We will not continually give our power away. You know, it might be an oracle deck. It might be tarot. I don't read tarot. I connect with people that do and they've got other gifts. We've all got our own messages through whatever divination tool and whatever divination might mean to some people. It means very, um, means very different things to another and so as somebody who balances the light and dark and works for the healing of the nations you know um we need to find the tools that help us rather than continuing to think that somebody else is coming to save us oh if i pay that person they can do it obviously we all have different gifts and we'll need to be going to somebody to cook us that because we love that specialty or go to that person because they've got prophetic visions or go to as part of our community try, like it's a tribe thing i'm talking about you know we all have different skills and back in the day the elders knew what um gifts that new addition to the village would come through with because i've already tapped into it before the ether because before we have children they're already chatting to us in the 5d if we're connected in that way you know and without going too far off, ow, um, 
everybody has a unique blueprint. We all have things that will heal us, but we have to do the work ourselves. We can't keep going. We can go to guides. We can go to things as little insights, but ultimately we can't know the future unless we see it ourselves for our visions. We can't go to somebody else to tell us our future. We can go for confirmations and we can go for um, insights, but ultimately we create, we piece together the puzzle because we know ourselves, because we've done the work. It's beautiful to come together and share in groups or dance in circles or um, classes and bits and bobs. But ultimately, we need to know ourselves. Because at the minute, I just see people. I see many of us almost giving up, like continually going to other people to do things for themselves when. And I don't think it's purely from laziness. I think it's from overwhelm of information out there in the wellness and spiritual space that's why I just kind of pull back and I don't really want to be involved in any of that stuff anymore because I've been massively disappointed at the state of some people and the way they're working but you know uh, money compels people to do stupid things ego does and status and glory and fame and fortune it pushes people to be wankers sometimes and uh I was going to say pardon the French, but people know by now. I swear it comes out. Um, I have a channel coming through right now, but I don't really want to talk about. No, I'm going to go. So thanks for listening. This is, I oh, don't even know what I'm going to title this, but tap into our own power. The gifts, the messages, they're all there for every one of us right now. Spirit is not elitist. <laughs> That's the society. Spirit will give us all messages. We just have to find our confidence and share it in the ways, whether it's publicly with our friends or with our family, whoever, we all have things to say to help us heal, to help heal our communities, tribes. You know, anyway, all right, ciao.